Hey everybody out there in YouTube, eBay, reseller land. This is Hayfro's Sells. <laughs> Hayfro Sells. Uh, my name is Jeff and I am a 12 year reseller, eight years full time. And we're gonna, there's a few more items that sold. I wanted to make a video because I wanted to show you how I packaged a couple of the more delicate items as well. Um, got some more thoughts on some things I want to share. Um, I know some people are experiencing really kind of crappy sales right now. Today was actually a good day. Um, for me, my sales goal is to sell 10 items a day. 10 items, 275 is my target. I don't always hit it. Today I'm at seven sales. And I don't count a sale until it's actually paid for. Um, I just find it's easier for me to kind of reconcile it that way. Um, so I have seven sales, seven sales that are paid, two that sold, but they haven't paid yet. Because there's always a chance that they don't pay or they cancel the order. So I don't really like to count it like that. Uh, but yeah, let me show you a couple more things that sold. Um, took an offer on this shining uh, Stephen King book. This is uh, one of the first printings from 1978. It's in pretty good shape. Uh, that was why I picked it up. I uh, sold this for 26, I think that was the price, plus shipping. Probably sold it a little bit cheap, but this is gonna be a theme for a while. Like, I, in my head, I kind of like, will accept offers, reasonable offers, until I hit my sales goal. Then I maybe will start countering or, or even declining. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I really want to hit my, uh, my allergies. Sorry, my allergies are really bad right now. Um, so yeah, that sold. Um, one of the, another thing that came through was uh, a pack. I love th this. is like one of my favorite things to sell. It's just a patch, the vintage Orlando, Florida patch. It is pretty awesome. Uh, great colors, and um, they're just so easy to ship. They're easy to list. Uh, this one sold for um, like thirteen bucks. Like it just blows my mind sometimes what people will pay for certain things. It is cool. There's no doubt about that. Uh, plus shipping. So, yeah. And then the other thing that came through was... Um, well, I had this listing of this these uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Toy Turtles um, listed. There was like, I don't know, there was like eight or nine pieces. They're like, they're nothing special. In, in fact, they've been sitting in my store forever. Uh, there are things that you get from McDonald's. Uh, I had this whole lot up for like 15 bucks plus shipping. And, and, and really, um, the guy messages me and he only wants this. There were two of these in it. He only wanted one of these. He's like, what, what can you do? And, you know, I, I looked at it and I'm like, well, in my mind, I'm like, shipping is going to be you know, five bucks for that, or, or maybe a little less. I'm like, I, I tell him I'll do nine all in, and he agrees to it. And um, the reason, one of the reasons that I, I, I did that was I looked at, well, obviously I'm accepting anything. Uh, I was thinking maybe I could upsell him, get him to buy that, and then maybe he would buy, maybe he would add something else. I could say, hey, you know, free shipping on anything else added. You know, I, I talk about this all the time. Upselling is, is, is the key to really maximizing your time and uh, and making the, the most out of an order but he didn't bite on anything else but i think one thing that is lost um or rather unappreciated from for what we do at ebay is is the customer service that's involved the back and forth with these customers the the uh 
the lost in translation things, but I mean, or, or, or just like misunderstanding. Everybody, everybody is so quick to just draw a line in the sand. So let me tell you what happened. So I said, I'll do five plus four shipping, nine all in. And, and, he, and he's like, so I, he's like, okay, let's do that. And um, so I invoice him, and then it's like it's like nine dollars and seventy some odd cents because of the tax. So he messages me back. He's like, "Hey, he's like, I thought you said nine dollars all in." I said, "Yes, I did." I go, but eBay. I'm like, if there's any overage over that, e eBay charges tax. I'm like, I have no control over that. And then he's like, immediately goes to like cancel the order, and I was like, and then before I had a chance to respond to that. He paid for it. So I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? So I messaged him again because I don't want to ship this and then have him come back tomorrow because I'm doing my shipping tomorrow. I don't want him to come back and be like, um, you know, I, I, I told you to cancel the order. So I messaged him like, hey, I'm like, you said you wanted me to cancel, but you did go ahead and pay. And he's like, no, nah. he's like, it's okay. I, I'm, and I'm just like, why is there gotta be so much stress? About this whole situation I mean like we get and I think you guys can only appreciate this if, if, if you're selling we get the dumbest questions all the time and it's so frustrating because I have better things to do than answer questions that for example uh, I'm selling this Ikea rail this guy messaged me he's like what's the length and inches the first picture there is it says right on the packaging, 22 inches. And I'm just like, 22 inches is what the first picture says. It's like, oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, I'm looking for the 36 inch. And I'm just like, oh, okay. I had another example. I can't remember it. But the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is as a, as a seller, you always have to be thinking about like shipping and, and packaging. And, and another thing, like, a mistake that I noticed that I had made about this listing was I literally undercharged, way undercharged the shipping because I didn't realize that it went over a pound. Now, by selling this, this one item from this lot, it takes it under a pound. So it actually benefits me that this sold and it'll make this lot a little more, well, I guess that won't make it more appealing because nobody was buying it to begin with. And I may end up pairing it with something else on my store, Teenage Mutant Turtle related. Uh, but I'm glad that it didn't sell uh, for the price because I would have actually made so little. So at least I got, and, and when I relist, if I relist it just as this, I'll probably just relist it at the same price just because only one thing's gone. Uh, something else I wanted to talk about was a week ago, uh, I sold a clock, a really awesome, like, anime clock. Uh, it's in one of my videos. Um, probably, like, my first What Sold video. As I was packaging it, I, I'm, 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 like, looking down as I'm packing it, and I noticed that it has a small crack. And the buyer paid a really fair price for this alarm clock it was like 78 dollars i think so i looked at it and i'm like oh man i'm like okay i could just package it not say anything cross my fingers and hope that he doesn't notice it you could kind of see it in the pictures but honestly had i seen it i would have fully done the write-up in the description so I find, this is what I do whenever I see this, because I'm like, okay, I could not say anything, hope, he get, hope that he gets it, he either he doesn't care or he doesn't notice, or it's coming back. And I do not want things back when they, when they leave my place, I do not want them back. So I don't accept returns, but obviously if it was not as described, I've got no choice. And um, so I message him, I'm like, hey, and I take a picture of it, I take a couple pictures of it and I explain to him, I'm like, hey, I, you know, I, the, there's a small crack in the one ear. I never noticed it until right now. Um, we can, you can totally cancel the order or 
we can do some sort of partial refund, uh, just so, something to make you make you feel that the de the deal that you're getting is worth having that small crack in the thing. He 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 wrote back immediately. He's like, a partial refund is totally fine. He didn't he didn't even ask about what he wanted. Um, I was totally cool with giving him like like a twenty percent refund because that's kind of what I would have wanted. I, that's and, and I like to treat my customers good, and I and I like to be upfront with them and and kind of like let them know uh, that there's no surprises and whatnot. So that's that's what I did. So I only ended up making like fifty a year. 62 or with math. I don't know. But but it was better me refunding 20% on the actual cost of the item instead of having to like deal with the return, having to refund the cost, the shipping, having to have the, the pay for the shipping and return back. Just just get, always get in front of things like that. Never do not cross your fingers and hope that they don't see it because they will see it. They will see things that aren't even there sometimes. Um Okay, so where did I, so I had to write a few things down. Um, I spent the good part of yesterday and today going through my stores with a fine tooth comb and taking down a ton of listings. And I mean a ton, I mean about 75 on both. Um, and here's my plan. So anything... And it's not like it's anything that's like super sketch or anything. Like I don't sell sketch stuff. I don't, you know, a board game, a card game that I didn't know I was supposed to sell and using the word bomber in a winter hat. Like getting two Vero's right, right now within a month has just really, really made me gun shy right about what's in my store. What's in my store now what I've already sold because that card game had already sold. Um, and and this Vero thing's not gonna go away right now because it's kind of like in my consciousness. Um, and here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna call eBay every day. And, uh, cause this is what the rep said. If you have any questions about whether or not you can sell something on eBay, you know, she said, do a little Google, do a little Google search. But I, the thing is, is I don't really even know what that means. Like I, I've actually tried to take a couple of the products to do, I mean, what are you searching? Like if you type in the product or the company name and then you type Vero and you type eBay, it, like, nothing comes up. So I don't really even know, like their, their suggestion is kind of meaningless. So I, this is my plan and I don't know whether or not I'm actually going to execute it. But this is what I intend on doing, is calling them and knocking out five listings a day that are in my unsolds now. And I'm gonna write the reference number down and I'm gonna be like, so here are five companies, here's the products, yay or nay. I'm gonna take the, the name down of the representative, the date that it's called, and I'll write it in a book. And if they say it's okay to ship, I'm sorry, if they say it's okay to list, then I figure I'm, I'm golden. Like, I, I don't see how they can give me a Vero if they tell me that I can list this product. And I'll have the call, I'll have the name of the rep, and I'll have the day. So because I'm so gun shy, like I said, I spent the better part of yesterday and today just going through my store to, to show to them that I'm being proactive. Um, I think that they recommend this sort of like action maybe after like your your you uh, ha are having like a restriction on your account i'm trying to get ahead of that I, I don't want that to happen so yeah i hope it kind of wears them down a little bit i'm hoping they're they're just kind of like okay all right guys you know people are calling and and i encourage you to do that if you don't know how to call in um they have made it more difficult to actually call in and get a rep. Uh, you have to like use this little chat bot. Uh, I have it bookmarked. If you don't know how to call in, uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming everybody does, um, leave a comment and then I'll 
I don't know, just copy and paste what my link is in, 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 the, uh, in the description. I, but I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows. Um, and I'm also going to continue to plant the idea. The solution to the, all the Vero problems is out there. It's simply have a pop-up box. eBay, have a pop-up box for every single company, every single word you're not allowed to use. If you're doing a listing and you put in Velcro in the title and you go to hit list, a little pop-up should come up. Are you sure you want to use the word Velcro? You will get a Vero. Unless you're an authorized dealer. I don't even know if there are authorized dealers. Don't use the word Frisbee. Don't use the word onesie. Like, this would, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna beat this dead horse in, into them. So I'm hoping I can just constantly get this idea that they'll they'll submit it and and you guys should do the same like anytime you're ever talking to a Vero rep I don't really know how often people talk to Vero reps but I'm going to be talking to them a lot okay so this has really set me back um this whole in terms of like what I was already going through like a store cleanse um I've been listing on i've been selling on my one store for 12 years on the on, on my, my, i've been helping my wife on her store for eight years and i basically have been like it's like dory just keep listing just keep listing just keep listing but so i have a lot of older items that um I hadn't deleted and sell similar. So so they're probably way down in the search rankings. Like a couple months ago, for me, sales were kind of slow and I was kind of looking into like things that you can do to um, kind of refresh your sale, your, your listings. Um, the people, the, the people who on YouTube, the resellers who are saying things like deleting listings and sell similars, that, that that's not good to do, it's complete garbage. And the reason why I know it's complete garbage is because this is what eBay told me to do. Like one time I called in and they, and, and they, he said that he was gonna refresh like my entire store. I don't really know what that meant to him. I really don't know what that did to my store uh, because he certainly didn't, delete all my listings and sell similar. So, but he did say that by deleting the items and, and, and listing it as sell similar, you get a new item number, it, it refreshes it and it kind of puts it back in the, in the um, up in the search rankings. And, and the reason why some of these listings could be far down is because they've done server upgrades. And your listings could actually be stuck on the old server, so they might not be, they might not be being seen, but it has nothing to do with, it, it might not have anything to do with like the age of your listing or, or the, um, the item description. It's just simply that it's an old listing that's kind of stuck on an old server. So that was one of the reasons why, uh, and I think that's one of the things that might've actually gotten me in trouble is by not gotten me in trouble, but potentially put some of my items that I deleted and sell similar kind of to the forefront. And that maybe could have been what got me the Vero is because they were possibly buried so far down on the server that the people who are looking for these listings so they can, you know, call eBay and say, hey, this person is infringing on my intellectual property. Um, I really liken these people to um, meter maid attendants. That's just me. Like, I, I feel like that is like the, the lowest of the low, just going around giving people uh, the job itself, not the people who do it. But, and, I, and I, I realize that people need a job, but I just feel like that is just like, it's just such a downer. It just brings you down, like when you, when you get a parking ticket. Um, and I just feel like these people who are, this is their job to go out and scour and, and like tattle on us. They're just, in my opinion, they're just the lowest of them below. 
Um, but, um, so yeah, so I was already in the process of trying to fix my titles. Now I've got to be like going through my store to kind of like see if there's anything going on with Vero that could potentially be Vero, which is just so annoying. It's just like not really what I wanted to be doing. And this is going to take me, you know, months to actually go through my store and relist all my items that are really, really old. And now I'm just like super paranoid about listing anything that could get me a Vero. Uh, but anyhow, finally, I just wanted to say, I'm a, I'm a newer channel, but I've been doing this reselling for a long time. Uh, today is my, my one week, and I just wanna say thank you for anybody who's watched my videos, who's liked them, who has you know commented, asked questions, or engaged in some way. And, and to the four subscribers that I have, I sincerely thank you and I appreciate you. And I feel very happy that, you know, at least somebody out there is watching these videos and they're appreciating them and they like them enough to give a like or give a subscription. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not the guy that's gonna like constantly ask for, you know, likes and subscribes. Uh, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. You know what to do. Like, if you like this stuff, you know you know what to do if you wanna see more. Like, you, you probably have been on YouTube for a very long time. So I do sincerely appreciate uh, everybody out there who have, uh, like I said, watched, like, who uh, comment or subscribe. Like, I, I, I feel very grateful and happy. So I feel like the first week, uh, to me, it has been fun. Uh, I look forward to continuing the journey and sharing my experiences, sharing uh, what I buy, uh, which I didn't buy anything this weekend. I'm like, I'm just taking a weekend off uh, from buying uh, anything. Um, I will show, you know what, I will end this note. I will end this video on, um, <laughs> this is so funny. This is the, this is the winter hat that I, um, that I sold that I used the word bomber in. Uh, I guess I can relist it now because there's no penalty to uh, to sell Gong Show products. Use the word aviator. Aviator hats are acceptable. That's actually what the Mad Bomber company said. And I am watching a ton of Euro videos uh, right now. Not right now, but like that's kind of what I've been doing is I am trying to like educate myself uh, I, I found some, some good videos on YouTube. I found some good Reddit uh, threads. Um, I, I, I think my Twitter idea was probably not very good because it's not, I think maybe a spreadsheet, maybe a spreadsheet that um, I can share. Uh, I'm thinking about that. Um, but anyhow, one thing I bought at a garage sale um, that I think is cool, and I like selling stuff like this because like, if I think it's cool, I think someone else is going to think it's cool. This is Mexican folk art. Um, I had picked up... Ye so... This is on tree bark. And they're just gorgeous. Like, look at these. They would look amazing framed. So I had picked up these two at a, at a thrift store. And I had listed them. I mean, I don't even know what kind of animal is that. But I, I think it's so awesome. But then I was at a garage sale um, a couple weeks ago. And I'm never, I'm never the first person at a garage sale. Like, I don't think I got there. I think this was the first one I went to. It was like noon. But I always, I always find stuff. Like, I'm just not... I, I don't know. I know people sometimes get up really early, but that's just not me. But anyhow, I found some more. And I'm going to actually bundle them all together. But I just think these are super cool. Uh, the, the, it's like a, an older an older uh, couple of ladies are having this garage sale. I don't even know what kind of animal that is either. But I, to be honest with you, I'm actually quite fascinated with the Mexican culture in general. Uh, I love their food, love the music. 
Uh, these are smaller ones. Somebody, and maybe I'll make one, maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll make one set first. Just, I don't know, I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do. I'm, I may, they have, because of the type of material, some, some there are some holes in some of them. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna make it in one listing, but I don't know, I, I love art. I just think this stuff is so cool. This, this is probably my favorite one of the, the bunch. I just love those blues. And then this is the last one. So this one, this one's kind of in low, low grade condition. So I'll list these locally as well because they are going to be a little bit of a pain to ship. Uh, I would have to roll them up and kind of put them in a thicker box. But I like picking up stuff like this. You'd be surprised what people will pay for art. So anyhow, have a good rest of your weekend. I'm going to finish. I wanted to get this video done so I could go ahead. Oh, I got one more thing I want to show you. I almost forgot. The glasses that I sold today. <clears throat> I want to show you how I package them. I'm an expert packager. Um, I basically just divided into quarters with uh, styrofoam. You, you, you cut one that's the size and you put it on the bottom. And then you you and then you just cut so they're all around, and then you fill the rest in with paper, and then and then you put this on top, um, and it will be very secure. So there's that, and then I kind of did the same thing with the Funkos. You just need to make sure you have an, like for this. You just need to make sure you have enough room. So this is what it's going to look like. So. Always do the shape test. Is it is it moving around? No, it's not moving around. Um, you just want to make sure that you have, leave enough room around. And so there's two underneath there as well. There's a, a newspaper on the bottom. There's some there's some like stuff like styrofoam on the sides to kind of keep it secure and keep it in place. And I mean that's how that's how I package some more delicate items. Um, and and a little tip: this box, this box came from Walmart. Uh, some of the displays that's from one of the Lego displays. They they have these awesome boxes that they kind of use to divide the Legos up. And um, yeah, I just, I just, it's where I get a lot of my boxes. Uh, there's, there, there's, at Walmart, you, you can find some, like, like for books, uh, or, like, I'll show you some more another time. Uh, they're in my basement. So, anyhow, have a good rest of your weekend. Uh, thanks for watching.